Welcome to Kevin Richards VIPs. So you want to be an actor? Today's guest does just that. The rough and tumble world of being a stunt double and actor? Today we get to know Nick Grimes. Hi. So I'm sitting here with Nick Grimes. We're in the Uptown Theater in beautiful downtown Barrie. This is not a camera trick. Nick is actually this big. Nick is a big actor in uh, a lot of different stunt movies. Nick, welcome to the show. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me here. The size of you. So I look like a little kid next to you. <laughs> this is funny. I, I think I th heard the chair squeak and say, ouch, when you sat down. So Nick, you're a Barry guy. Yep. All right. You're not born and raised here, but you spent most of your adult life here. Yeah, I basically spent my, uh, my entire adult life here. And it's one of these cities that I absolutely love because everyone's just so friendly, accommodating. Mm -hmm. um, accepting so for me to be this dreamer and pursuing something that's a little out there mm -hmm. um, it's a see it's great it's about uh, you know helping me support these interesting dreams that I've been following so, that's cool yeah it buries in my blood that's so. awesome it's nice because sometimes you hear people say oh I I, I, I hate it here yeah. but it's usually the people who hate it here who love to tell everybody how much they hate it but people who actually genuinely like it don't tell it enough no, that's so true. that's pretty cool that you do yeah. so tell me a bit about you your adult life was spent where doing what so well Flashback all the way to university. I started off in university in Guelph, um, played basketball there. And throughout my life, I just kind of popped up in Barrie. And along the line there, I just I always had this dream of being an actor. Yeah. And it was one of these things back in high school, it wasn't a cool thing to be in drama. Um, it was kind of a nerd thing. And being a jock was a great thing. Yeah. So it was an easy decision. Yeah. You want girls or you want to be accepted, you played sports. <laughs> and it sucked because I always had that thing inside me to be an actor you know that little yeah. whisper whatever it's a good message yeah. and um, yeah you know certain circumstances happen in life and it kind of gave me that push to uh, finally pursue it um, but yeah no I grew up playing sports like like most people that's cool but hockey uh, baseball and then university and stuff like that played volleyball and basketball yeah. and now were you ever a smaller guy and maybe your idea of a smaller guy is not a smaller guy like my idea of a smaller guy you were at one time well, like in you know university you would have been yeah well I mean put things in perspective I don't know if you can tell on the camera here but I'm 6'5 yeah I'm currently about 280 um, I'm a little messed up because I think that's small but uh, yeah back in, in high school and university I would have been about 200 220 pounds okay. which I know sounds like a lot but yeah. it's one of those things on a 6'5 guy it's not that much yeah and uh, so a uh, part of playing sports and trying to put on size and you know impress girls and all that kind of stuff I kind of got into the gym and yeah. it was one of those uh, pursuit to, to put on a lot of muscle it's funny because I try to take pride in the fact that I try to maintain a healthy lifestyle but I'm built more like a soccer player and you're built <laughs> like the guy that would just throw me over a net yeah, right? probably. there you go so when you're working out what's your program like like there's got to be something for you just to maintain you right now yeah. to get to where you want to be and it, let's just sort of back this up you do stunt double and we're gonna get under all that sort of stuff in a minute yeah. and talk about where you're going with that yep. but to be you to be a big dude I don't know what your calorie intake is or I don't know what you're eating but what's it like or what was it like to get you to look like this because okay. I don't want to use that freak term we talked no, no. about that it's yeah, kind yeah. of funny but you don't get you know the, the smaller size jobs no no no. A, a lot of it's gonna be based on my size and in the whole acting world any doors that you can open mm -hmm. uh, you, you're doing yourself a huge favor so obviously my look uh, the little things like the shaved head makes me more intimidating my size being a certain shape it keeps opening up all these doors mm -hmm. and then once you get in these doors it's your talent that's gonna you know book you the gigs and stuff like that um, so maintaining my, my image and my look is huge um, so to backtrack you know yeah I start off at 220 um, I think throughout my years, I had this lofty goal of trying to hit 400 pounds. Why? Uh, Why 400? Why is that magic number 400? That's huge. There was this old old school actor and wrestler named Jeep Swanson. Yeah. And he was a Canadian. I'm an old wrestling guy. Okay, well it. then you yeah. know. Okay. He weighed 405 yeah. when he finished wrestling and he was getting into acting. He took on old guys like Stomper and all the old guys. Amazing. Yeah. And I just had it in my head, I wanted to be Jeep big, because he was the same height. Big. <laughs> and. Sadly, it was one of those things where um, part of the fitness industry that no one wants to talk about or part of the bodybuilding uh, culture and industry that no one wants to talk about mm -hmm. is just a pretty uh, dark road that people go down and it's, it's steroid use. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, obviously, my, my training was impeccable. I had some of the best coaches in Canada. 
Uh, my diet, I was eating 6,000 calories a day uh, to put on size. 6,000 calories, so if anybody takes Easily. a look at that, a Big Mac is like 500 calories or 800 calories. Oh yeah, and this is coming from, from clean and foods. And that's clean so, foods, yeah. which have the smaller calorie count. I think every meal, honestly, for a while was like, because I didn't have a lot of money, it was rice, so it was at least three or four cups of rice, and it, it, it takes a while to get up to 600 calories. But just to justify something though, steroids going into somebody, unless you lift, unless you lift hard and heavy, the steroids have a 10%, 20% impact on you, oh, right? Yeah. So unless you're doing the other stuff, we can give steroids some, some, I hate to give it kudos, but it has its benefit to a point. There's health risk for sure. Mm -hmm. Mentally, physically, emotionally, all kinds of stuff, you know, testosterone especially is not something you should mess with, yep. estrogen. But when you start talking about taking things, you, you worked hard. Yeah. Oh no, I, nothing's ever gonna replace you know, a, a perfect diet and hard work and, mm -hmm. and being consistent with everything. Um, but the biggest thing that someone else put in my head with stuff like steroids or even natural supplements, it's just gonna get you there a little bit quicker. Yeah. Um, no matter what, it's your hard work, your diet, and your training that's ever gonna get you there. Mm -hmm. So I went down that dirty road and it's one of these things that you become so naive to yourself that you overlook some health concerns. You don't worry about having high blood pressure because that scale's going up, and you're getting the results you're hoping for. Exactly, and, and then everything else just kind of. Oh, you, 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 yeah, you put it in the rearview mirror. Mm -hmm. um, it, and it's one of those things where I, you know, I got the 300, and then I got up to 350, and then it was this crazy pursuit of 400. <gasps> Did you hit it? And no, I stopped at 365, <sighs> and thank God that was my moment of clarity of finally pursuing acting. And I had a huge change in life, and I got away from that. Um, so there was a spot then where you had a change in life. Yep. What was it then that, so obviously you're pursuing this acting goal, yep. right? You've got this carrot before you that you're chasing, 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 mm -hmm. chasing. When, I'm not gonna ask you when you caught the carrot yet, I wanna know what was it that made you realize you needed to drop from that 365? What was it health-wise? Something in your life had to change you. Yeah. Well, it was, one of these hardest things, the hardest things to talk about, and uh, I remember I, I owned a, a very successful supplement store at the time. Uh, I was doing really well. Uh, I believe I was married at the time, and one of my good friends passed away, Sorry. and he had a heart attack right in the gym, and it was one of these glaring moments of uh, Aaron needs to take a step back. <laughs> Nick needs to take a step back um, and refocus what you're doing. Um, so I started to, to view life differently. Uh, I started to change the way I lived life. And I, and I looked at things totally different where mm -hmm. everyone knows life is short. We all talk about it. It really is. It. People don't realize it. But I found that a lot of people just, it was lip service. Lip service. They were just saying it. Um, yeah. It was one of those things where, you know, we know we got X amount of years on this earth and maybe get something, it's a little less. But I realized how precious life was. And... You know, my friend died in his early 30s. And, and what was it, if I may? Uh, he had um, sudden heart failure. So mm -hmm. it was uh, on top of everything else he was doing. It was a genetic disease. Um, but uh, It's a tough time to, to think of somebody going. It's always tough to lose somebody. But if somebody's lived a full life, that's one thing. But if you're really tight and somebody's your brother or your family or you love them, and, uh, and when I say brother, it doesn't have to be genetically, yeah. right? To lose that, I'm sorry, it sucks. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, one of these, you know, TSN turning points and uh, learning how precious life is. Like, like tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Yeah. So it was one of these things where I was one of those guys who put my fears, my uh, how scared I was, my insecurities into my passions. So I kept saying, you know, I'm gonna be an actor one day. You know, yeah. so a year from now I'm gonna pursue it. Not from that point. At that point, I got on the phone, I sold my store. I put the wheels in motion. I had a really good friend who knew of an acting coach I could go to. Cool. I got on that the next week, and you fast forward, and I'm doing the career that I love. I, I put all my fears and my insecurities aside, and there's no better feeling than being able to do something that you absolutely love. It never yeah. feels like work. It's amazing how sometimes that spark has to come from the hardest spot. It but is. that's one of the things that I think makes it more ingrained in you wanting to be dedicated and committed and driven to make it happen because at one point in your life you didn't think it could. And that's almost what the challenge is, is I didn't think I could do it, but I'm gonna. Yeah. And that's awesome. Well, and I always think we, we all have that voice inside and we, we know our potential, but it's whether we let our own fears get in the way or we let others. 
You know, like one of my biggest things people say is, Nick, you don't care what others think. Mm -hmm. And it's not that. I actually do care what others think. I just never let it impact me. Yeah. Um, well, they always say that other people's opinions shouldn't matter because no. it's what I think of me. Exactly. Right? And that's important. And it's good and bad. Yeah. Because I see it now with uh, my current acting success. I'm starting to get the other tail end of it where people are trying to, you know, blow smoke up. Or blow up my tires and how amazing I am or people want to be my friends or, or weird stuff like that the non -genuine. and again that doesn't impact me I know who I am I'm grounded uh, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna build this ego because of that um, it, it's great to hear and obviously it's sure. you know a, a tiny pat on the back that I'm, I'm doing something right or whatever so they're all that no and then it's the same with the negative stuff you know we all have haters or we all have people that uh, um, either want to dump their own insecurities or they're jealous of uh, some successes or, or things in life, which I know <laughs> yeah. definitely in the same boat. Yeah, I get that. Um, and it's one of those things sometimes it's great to hear because it is some constructive criticism. Yeah. And I've definitely walked away from scenarios going, you know what, the, guy was, the, the message he gave me was awful. Yeah. But uh, there's something in there that I need to change. And then a lot of times it just you know, bounces off. And sometimes I find the best comeback is when somebody says something to you, you go, yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, well, now what? Yeah, nothing to say. Now oh, what? That's great. Right? Yeah. And then the other thing is, you just know how to, and I respect this. You have to just be you, mm -hmm. right? Because at the end of the day, you got to be the one that puts yourself to bed and with a clear conscience, right? And if oh, you sleep sure. well, then you've done fine. Exactly. Right. So when you're going through life and you're training and you're through all this, there's got to be a point that all of a sudden you did grab that carrot. What was the first gig, or can you tell me a little bit about that? What were, the, yeah. what were some of the first things that made you feel really great about it? Well, I remember my first year of acting, because if you talk to any actor, it's the most scary thing, because you go through a lot of experiences that you're not really prepared for. Uh, rejection. The rejection's gotta be massive. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it was humbling because I'm, I'm an older fella pursuing acting. I can't imagine yeah. some of the younger uh, girls and guys pursuing this. Um, yeah, you, you're doing really well if you're booking one out of 10 or 20 jobs when you start off. Yeah. So that means you're getting rejected nine or 19 times. Yeah, you got it. And a lot of times it's not that you were bad or it's not that um, you bombed the audition. It's just you weren't what they're looking for. Just but, weren't what they're looking for. But and people have to understand that. It's hard because sometimes you do feel that you're not good enough or mm -hmm. um, it was your acting ability that wasn't what they wanted or whatever. But sometimes you got to feel a little defeated because you think you were what they were looking for. Oh, you for think sure you happens. nailed it. Yeah. And then that's got to be the biggest carpet pull. The hardest part for me, I'll be candid with this, is when I go in for an audition and I know I nailed it, I can walk away happy. Mm. But then when I watch that TV show <laughs> or I watch that commercial and the guy that got the role is horrible, it absolutely eats me up. I'll bet. I'm fine if I'm blown away or it's a great actor or it was a different look or something. Yeah. It's fine. That's the industry. And I love it. And I applaud everyone. But when I get someone that just doesn't make sense, and I've had that a few times with commercials of all yeah. things, uh, yeah, it chaps me. Yeah, and but, I'm sure positively though too, you've seen guys that got the part and you're like, yeah, that guy nailed it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. you have to. And yeah. that's good. You know, I, I, I know the potential I have um, and I know I'm just scratching at it, um, but at the same time, like there are way better actors out there. I'm not gonna lie and think that I'm better than every large size actor in Canada. Yeah. Uh, one day I'm gonna be better than all of them. But right now, I, I, know, I know where I'm sitting, and yeah, I can always applaud someone who's better than me. There's tons out there. And that's the best yeah. honest way to be driven too, right? Is to know that you're doing things confidently in what your abilities are yeah, and yeah, where you're going. To. It's yeah. good for you. So you grab that carrot. What are we looking at movies-wise? What have we seen so that, you, that you're out there? Because I know you've my, got some uh, things. Some of my most embarrassing stuff, my first gig ever was Degrassi. You did Degrassi? Uh, I did Degrassi. Were you a bully or something? Or? Oh, no, very stereotypical. I was a security guard at a concert, <laughs> and I yelled at some kids for being backstage. Um, <laughs> nervous as hell. I bombed on set. I think my voice changed. I was so nervous. I'd never been around cameras and boom mics and all these people. Yeah. Um, Does a craft truck just close the door when they but, see you uh, coming? Oh, like, yeah. yeah, I'm not giving this guy anything. No <laughs> way. He's eating everything. Well, usually now I get my own section, which is great. Nice. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so I've done some stuff uh, yeah. when I was... Uh, Non-union, I booked a lot of uh, like small budget movies and anyway, some interesting stories there. Yeah. Uh, but you fast forward, I'm just finishing up my third year. Uh, I've done some amazing stuff. I was on a big TV show called Defiance. I uh, did Suicide Squad. What did you do in Suicide Squad? So Suicide Squad was uh, an amazing experience. So it's on, a cool movie. On the, oh, amazing movie. Yeah. Um, I was one of Joker's henchmen. Um, all our scenes are just badass, you know, uh, blowing people away. Um, ah, just a stereotypical like villain. So play it out for me a little bit. So you're there. You've got 
actors that you know around you. You've got to be a little starstruck at points. I was lucky in this movie that I have a mask on. Yeah. So I call it TV face. And yeah. that's when you're just blown away by someone's ability, whether you're watching sports or a movie or something. Yeah. And so I had the ability to watch some of the most, not just A-list celebrities, but the best actors. So I'm, like I said, I'm Jared Leto's Joker's henchman. So I, I saw all his everything. Cool. And he is just mind-boggling brilliant. He's amazing. Mm. There's one scene in the movie that I will never forget, and it's a little monologue he has with Harley Quinn, and we must have shot that about 50 times, yeah. and he did it 50 different ways. That's how talented that guy is. That's crazy. So to sit there with my mask on yeah. and have TV face, just watching it was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and you walk away humbled, you walk away with an amazing experience, yeah. um, and then you walk away seeing how far you got to get acting wise to even get close to some of these guys. Yeah. Um, for me, it was the most motivating thing, um, but it was just a stepping stepping stone for me. To, so much fun, uh, though. Oh, it was a blast. And amazing. Well, yeah, a life experience. When I take a step back and I tell you what I did, I basically just shot guns all day. I got to hang out with Jared Leto and I got paid for it. You like, know what? That's one day in somebody's life that people would be like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. I'm all good. Life is good. So then how do you escalate that? What's the next step for you after that? What else have you done after that? Because that's super cool. Yeah. Well, no matter what, I, I'm an actor first. I'm an actor that does stunts. Um, because there's not a lot of large size actors that do stunts, mm -hmm. um, it's opened up a lot more doors for me. Mm -hmm. There's certain roles out there that require both. You know, they can't just hire any actor, they need an actor that does stunts. Um, the odd time I will do stunts, mm -hmm. when it's a chance to work with somebody or it's a chance to work with, I um, mean, it's a top stunt coordinator. Um, so I've done crazy stuff, like got knocked out, uh, fallen downstairs, uh, beat up by girls, um, <laughs> you name it. And it's been fun. There but, are sometimes you see actors that you know that the woman or the male can actually give you a go. Oh yeah. But then there's some where you're just like, like I interviewed another gentleman that had to arm wrestle a Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. And it's like, come on, seriously? You'd kill him, yeah. right? So you must be up against some guys that you're just like, come on, seriously? <laughs> All right. Oh, it always it's got to be hard. Like, well, the funniest part is there's certain people that look the part, and it doesn't mean they're tough. They just look like a tough guy. Yeah, but they're not. So I've you had get the Jason Statham's that. Come on, really? He's not a big dude. No, but he looks like he can scrap. Well, I've had it where the opposite, where it looks like the guy could kick. It yeah. just beat me up, and it's one of those where I met the guy, and he's the softest guy I've ever met, and <laughs> uh, you know his, his handshake was like this. And oh, the, the just, limp fish. Oh, no, ones. the dead fish. And, but he's the guy who kicks my, my butt in the scene, right? Oh. Um, so, but it's one of these things, you get into character and you kind of forget about it. Um, so, yeah, but. so when they're throwing you around, or when you are doing this, that throwing around thing, and nobody needs to know if you're ever broken or anything, because there's a, yeah. a thing you have to know about your industry that you just can't ever say you got hurt. Yeah. But you've been hurt. Like, you've, you've been through some tough stuff. Well, no matter what, uh, it's, it's like going back to sports. Are you hurt or you're injured? Because mm -hmm. if you're hurt, you can keep playing. Yeah. Um, so I've taken that mentality into any of the stunts I do. And, and one of the biggest things with stunts, no matter how brutal they look or yeah. real, the number one thing is safety. So we're all taught how to fall properly. Um, believe it or not, we're wearing pads. And you go to a, a training for that. Yeah. yeah. Whenever you get your fight scene or you're repelling or you're doing something crazy, you are practicing that for months on end before, or at least if it's a fight scene, the whole week leading up to it. And you're working, well, I'm fortunate, I'll end up working with some of the best sure. stunt guys in, in Toronto. And it has to be convincing, so you gotta and, nail it. Well, and there's the one side of it is you wanna please your director and you wanna, you wanna do the scene justice and do it right. But the other part is that this is my career. Yeah. And I'm in full control. So it's not that I just want to do that fight and make everyone else happy. I want to look good doing it. Yeah, for because, the next gig. Yeah, you're watching me. Other people are watching. Um, it, it's like any job. Like that's, you know, my report or that's my next thing to work my way up the ladder. Yeah. And so I've looked at every single thing I've ever done and taken that approach to it. Yeah. So well, you look at somebody like Jackie Chan. He's broken every bone in his body how many times? Yeah. But the guy keeps going and he it's okay for him because he's the lead and he can get away with saying I broke my yeah. wrist in this movie. It's like professional athletes. I've never seen anything like it in the NFL and NHL where they've got how many times somebody had a concussion yeah. and knee injuries in the same thing as how many times they've got an assist. So one of the, the things with stunt guys is they never get hurt. It's yeah. one of these things. They never um, get hurt. Unless you physically see the guy break his arm or his mm -hmm. knee is bent backwards, okay, he's hurt. Yeah. Um, 
but a lot of these guys are walking around with broken ribs. Um, there's a crazy story of, I won't say who it is, uh, but it was one of those stunt guys in 300, mm -hmm. and he shattered his entire wrist, uh, I think it was weeks before filming started, and he hit it. <laughs> he did the whole, whatever, 90 days of filming with a shattered wrist and like wore the bone down and everything. Um, but it's because he didn't want to lose that gig. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a job and it's money. And so it's one of those things, yes, I've been hurt. I've, uh, yeah, like I have really bad ribs from a car accident years ago. So usually when I fall, I do feel it. Um, but I can always come back for more. Um, but I've been fortunate, you know, knock on wood, wherever there's wood. <laughs> and uh, I haven't broken any major bones yet. Yeah. Um, cool. Hopefully don't plan on it. No. But. So what projects are you working on right now? You're only allowed to talk about so much, obviously, because they're coming out. And yeah, it's get unfortunate that I'm in a big movie that's coming out in the spring I can't talk about. I'm no. in the number one anticipated video game that comes out in February. You're that's in a video say. game. Yep. I'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Um, and then... So people can control you. Like a, like oh, a character. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Good. Um, yeah, really excited when we can announce that. And then I've done a, a bunch of TV shows. Um, so ones I can talk about, uh, I did a little spot on uh, Shadowhunters, on the new TV show Taken. Um, recently just uh, finished up with Private Eyes. with. Those Mr. are all Jason good shows. Yeah, yeah, those are all good shows. And Jason Priestley is good for you to work with, too. Right? He's just such a nice guy. Well, I grew up watching 90210, so who doesn't like Jason Priestley? He's kind of turned around to be more of a Canadian ambassador now, too, which is really nice. Like, Amazing. Yeah. He, cool. uh, he's gotten on the other side of the camera, so he's a producer now. Yeah. And he's purposely brought a lot of stuff to, to not even just Toronto, but Canada in general. And mm -hmm. it's amazing for us up-and-coming actors that we can have the ability to work in Toronto. You know, I, don't, I can yeah. live in Barrie and commute to Toronto every day. Yeah. It's amazing. There's cool. a certain good and bad of a strong and weak dollar, and when we start to become more LA North, there's certain times that they start to hire more Canadian actors or oh, Canadian yeah. locations. That's well, cool. there's a certain percentage, I think, I can't remember what it is, but it's like 65% of the staff, so whether it's the cameraman or the actors that have to be Canadian. So it's a big deal that all these... Uh, Canadian content. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. all coming up here, so... That's cool. Yeah. So when you're not doing this, what is there that's in the, the Mr. Grimes just kind of chill out time? What is it that you chill out and do when you're not lifting stuff and putting it down and you're not... So if I'm not training, which I train about five days a week... Um, I've seen you at the gym and I try not to walk past you. Yeah, yeah. that's just a scary face. It's it's just, no one talks just, to that's me. a lot of sweat. Yeah. That's I'm a really a nice guy. Um, no, what I'm not, honestly, uh, the biggest thing I pride myself in is my friends. My friends are my family. Uh, I grew up an only child. Uh, I'm not really close with my entire family, mm -hmm. and it's not a sad thing. Uh, no. I've made up with it with amazing friends, and I try to socialize with them as much as I can. Um, mm -hmm. Like I have a couple of my buddies that every Tuesday night we go out to the movies. Um, you know, whether we're going out. To do you be make them go to see your movies, or do you just oh, go to other? Movies? I don't want anyone to ever watch my stuff. I'm so weird about it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I never even watch my stuff. I really? Just, yeah, it's... Because i got to admit, I, I watch know. my own show once in a while just to see yeah. what I can improve on or what, uh, you know, because <sighs> some guests actually s said things that I didn't quite always catch, yeah. and it's pretty cool. So I'll be watching this to see how you do. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I won't watch this. <laughs> oh, yeah, you will. But, um, no, other than that, I'm trying to think of some other stuff. Uh, I'm a pretty simple guy. Um, yeah. I, I've always grown up a huge movie buff, so I yeah. don't I don't watch TV. Yeah, I just watch movies. Favorite kind of movies? Not like The Notebook or something. You're like, <laughs> Can I admit that? I can't admit that on TV. Go ahead. Um, yeah. No, honestly, Fried meat tomatoes. every yeah. everything has changed <laughs> from. I don't watch what's popular. Mm. I follow either directors. So some of my favorite are like Tarantino. I oh, love his movies. Genius. I can watch them yeah. uh, over and over again. Uh, or it's actors. I fall in love with certain actors, and I'll watch any of their performances. Who's your favorite actor right now? Right now. <sighs> I'd either say Jared Leto. Cool. Um, absolutely phenomenal. Um, and then everything goes back to Christoph Waltz. Cool. So, See, I'm an old Gary Oldman fan. Okay. Like, I love oh, phenomenal. creepy kind of Dracula yeah. kind of cool stuff. So you like, you like the guys that are more into what you're doing, or you have more of a fascination with what? Uh, it is a fascination of where I want to get to. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're some of the most dynamic, uh, talented, most like we call it range in acting, so being able to do mm -hmm. a bunch of different types of characters and whatever, and I yeah. think they're the pinnacle. Yeah. Um, these are guys that could probably take on any role. Yeah. So. so then what do you see yourself doing next? Like, obviously you want to just keep seeing yourself acting, 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 yeah. but is there something you've always wanted to land? Is there something you've always wanted? Obviously uh, you want to be like The Rock, like there's always going to want to be that, I'd right? be anybody. But, uh, it'd be you. It's tough. Uh, 
you know, the, the next uh, step on the ladder is going to be landing a series, so whether it's a, a TV show or landing a bigger role in a movie, um, and then just keep climbing the ladder in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, I have lofty goals. Like, I know down the road I want to get behind the camera and, and produce. I have a very creative mind, so I'd love to maybe try my hand at uh, directing. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just have all these crazy stories that I think I could bring to life or I, I see the world a little different. Um, mm -hmm. So I think when the time comes and I'm satisfied with where I've gone with acting, then that'd probably be the next step. Mm -hmm. But for now, I absolutely love what I do. Yeah. Um, like even like I was saying, like there's so many jobs within this job. Yeah. So yeah, people talk about, you know, I've done a bunch of commercials. Um, I have a really funny one on right now. Which uh, is? My friends call me the poo bouncer. So it's a Sino Kit uh, commercial, a laxative ad. Yeah. And uh, the lady in the ad is suffering from issues, and she goes to her own bathroom, and there's a body, or there's a, uh, a security guy blocking her from going to the door. Oh. So I'm in that. So my friends are having uh, a good laugh at that one. Uh, but every time they laugh and watch it, I'm getting paid, so I'm okay. Yeah, um, the royalties are fun. Oh, yeah. At the end of the day, I'll do anything. <laughs> Acting's acting. Um, yeah, and then, you know, from commercials <laughs> to TV shows to film. Uh, but there's another uh, uh, realm or whatever that a lot of people don't know, and it's the video game realm. And Amazing. Billions of gamers. Dollars. Gamers yeah. are making tons of money. And so it's funny how back in the day people used to make fun of the geeks, but now everybody works for them. Oh yeah, right. Well, look at even you know we're talking earlier about Avengers and stuff. Like yeah. now it's it's cool to admit that you're in yeah. the comics or that kind of Marvel stuff. and DC yeah. have just dominated. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so this is a different experience. Mm -hmm. um, I'd definitely be able to um, uh, show you a couple uh, photos and stuff, but um, this is one of those where you enter an interesting environment. Um, you're wearing the black suit with all the dots on it, and the computer guys are picking up all your data. Um, so I'm oh, a neat. bunch of characters, and I've done a bunch of video games. Um, but yeah, and unfortunately, I can't talk about yeah, it no, much I get that. it's not out yet. Yeah, but that's really cool. So, so now, I, now my kids can watch it, and I can watch you on the bigger screen, you know, throwing people around. And it's funny, so to identify you in movies isn't always easy. You do no. tend to have to wear a lot of costume. Yeah. Uh, it's, Does that bother you? No, I'm early in my career. I, I don't care. Uh, I never got into this for the fame. I never got into it to be recognized. I never got into it to have fans mm -hmm. or any of that. Um, I have these creative juices that I just want to get out, and I know I'm always going to be typecast. Um, eventually, I would love to have opportunities where I'm not. Obviously, I'm never going to be the love interest. Um, Why not? Unless the other love interest is like 6'5 girl or something. <laughs> um, an Amazon somewhere it's waiting for you. Yeah, who knows? Um, but I'm fine being typecast because it's just a chance to, you know, explore my creativity. So yeah, I wear a lot of prosthetics. Yeah. Um, you know, they turn me into a demon, uh, or yeah, wearing a mask or whatever. But I've looked at every opportunity as a chance to learn, uh, to further my career, and keep working with more people in the industry. So all of this is really cool because I love the the concept of somebody who's being a big athletic dude, remembering that sometimes taking that drama class was just as smart as the guy who should have taken the business class to make their future better. Because there's a lot of people who are really successful at business who remember back when they took that drama class and were able to have some confidence and do that. Oh. So if you've got a message, just sort of a quick message, because we got to go, yeah. but I, cause I could talk to you all day. <laughs> I know. What's your message right now that you would love to tell people? Let's go. The biggest thing, and I, I hear from time and time again where people, uh, you know, I don't think I'm an inspiration, but people seem to be inspired by uh, the choices I make. And it's as soon as you discover any kind of passion in life, especially when it comes to a career, mm -hmm. is you can't be afraid to chase it and go after it. Yeah. And I know that's easy to say, but someone said this amazing quote, and sometimes it only takes one person to believe in yourself, yeah. and that's yourself. Exactly. And as long as you know you have the potential, mm -hmm. that you know you have the passion, that these aren't lies, you're not trying to impress somebody, yeah. you have the drive, the work ethic, and all this to mm -hmm. put a plan in action, then you gotta do it. Because again, life is short and precious, so why not do what you love for, for a living? Um, I've never been more happy in, in my entire life uh, chasing this dream and, and doing what I absolutely love. Well, having pure joy is the best thing you can have, and it has been a pleasure talking to yeah, you. It's been awesome. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. Cheers. Best of luck in everything. Thank you.